Let's break down exactly how you can use gradient maps to level up your color grading along with tips to get the absolute best results from these adjustment layers inside of Photoshop. Now in this lesson, we're gonna go through two different examples. The first is with this portrait photo and then the second is with this landscape image here instead. So in the second example, we're gonna go through some more advanced techniques of using gradient maps, but in the first example, we'll just get you up and running with it so you can start using them right away. So starting with the first example, Example, we need to, of course, create a new gradient map adjustment layer, and that can be found here inside of the adjustments panel. Now, if you don't see the adjustments panel, just go up to window and then down here to adjustments to reveal that panel. And then inside of the panel, you'll see the gradient map option right here. So I'll click on that. This will create a new gradient map adjustment layer directly above the image layer that was active in the layers panel. And by default, in my particular case, I have a black to white gradient, which is being applied onto the photo. Now in a nutshell, gradient maps are essentially adding a solid color to the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights based on where the colors sit in this gradient. So if the color is far over on the left here, that's going to be affecting the shadows. As we can see looking at this image, all the trees and things which are naturally dark, aka the shadows, are being filled with black, which is this color range here. So that's how we know that the shadows color is over here on the left. Now the opposite is true with the highlights on the right where we have the white color that is taking up all the snow, the sky, and a lot of the midtones as well. So in a nutshell, that is how the gradient map works. It's applying colors to the shadows and the highlights based on the gradient you have here. Now obviously you probably don't want a black to white gradient, so we're going to add some color to this in just a moment. But before we do, to make our life easy so that we can actually have a blended and half decent looking gradient map, we're going to change the layer blending mode of this adjustment layer. With the gradient map layer selected, we'll go up to the layer blending mode, we'll click on that and go down here to overlay. This will apply all of the colors from this gradient map into the image in a way that just looks a little bit more intense and it blends the colors a lot better once we actually go and customize this gradient here. So to customize this gradient, all we need to do is click on the gradient editor by clicking on this preview bar right here. So clicking on that will open up the gradient editor. Inside of the gradient editor, we have our two color swatches here by default. Our blacks is the shadows area and the whites in this case is the highlights. So let's go and add some color into this gradient to stylize this image to our tastes. In this particular case, I'd love to have some like warm brown tones across the entire photo. So we'll click on the black color color swatch here or the shadows color swatch here and then click on the color thumbnail to access the color picker. Here I'll go and find a sort of dark orangey brown color that's going to look nice in the image. There is no right or wrong, you could just play around with this until you are happy with the colors that you get. But for this example, I just want a darker brown color here. And because we had set the overlay blending mode earlier on, the colors are going to look a lot better here in the final result as we're previewing our colors. I'll click OK to commit to those changes. Now as for the highlights color, I'm pretty happy with the white, but let's also try a different color for the sake of example. I'll click on the white color swatch here, or the highlight color swatch, and then click on the color swatch down below. This will open up the color picker, and this time I'll go and add sort of a yellowy color. Let's see what we can do. Something like this, a bright yellow color for the sky and the highlights and things. So that looks good to me right there. I'll click OK. So now we have this brown coloring to our photo, but of course it looks a little bit too intense. So I'm going to click OK to exit the gradient editor, and now to refine the intensity of this gradient map, with that gradient map adjustment layer selected, we can just go up to the fill or opacity slider, click on that, and then reduce the opacity or fill of that adjustment layer to make the colors blend in and just feel a little bit less intense. So that way we're still getting that nice color grading effect of the gradient that we've added, but it's not so overwhelming anymore. So turning that on and off, you can see how it totally stylizes this photo, gives it a completely new look, all while just using a single gradient map. Now before we get into the next example where we are going to cover some more advanced steps, if you're going to try using these techniques 
techniques in your photos, let me know by hitting the like button down below. Now for our second example, I'll close up my example one and open example two here. We're going to take this one step further. So turning off my example one so we can now see this image here, what I'd like to do is actually add three colors to my gradient map, but then I'm going to selectively blend in the colors using blend if as well as some layer masks with another adjustment layer. That all might sound a bit complex right now, but I promise you it's actually pretty easy once you kind of do it for yourself. So to begin, I'll click on my image layer and then add a new gradient map by going to my adjustments panel and clicking on the gradient map adjustment here to create a new gradient map adjustment layer directly above that image layer. Now, just like before, we have a black to white gradient, the black affecting the shadows and the whites affecting the highlights. So of course we want to go and change the colors of this once again, but just like before to ensure that we can actually see what the results are going to look like when they're all blended in, I'm going to change the layer blending mode from normal down here to overlay to apply those colors a little bit better into the photo. Now let's go and edit the look of these colors by clicking on the gradient map preview here. I'll click on that to access the gradient editor. Now, just like before, I'll start by clicking on the shadow swatch and click on the color swatch for the shadows there to set a specific color. For this image, I would love to have some really intense moody blues in the shadows. So I'm going to move the hue over to a blue color and play around until I find a darker blue color that works for me. In this case, something like this looks good for me, and I'll click OK. Now I'll go and edit the highlights color by clicking on the highlights color swatch and clicking on the color thumbnail here. For this example, or for this highlight area, I want the highlights to be sort of a yellowy color like this. So I'll choose a nice light orangey yellow like so. I'll click OK. Now looking at this image, it looks all right, but I would like to have a little bit more pizzazz in the middle of the photo or like the mid-tone areas of the photo. And if I look at my gradient, you can see how it's kind of like this gray color currently in the mid-tones. Luckily, we can go and add another color in this area simply by clicking just below it in the gradient preview. So I'll click on there to add a color stop. Clicking on the color swatch, I'll now go and choose sort of a lighter blue color to blend in the colors from the dark blue shadows to sort of a lighter blue mid-tone that then goes into a yellowy highlight. Again, there's no right or wrong with this. You just gotta play around and see what works best for you and your image. So I'll just move this over to something like this. So we have like a bluey gray color. That looks pretty good to me. I'll click okay. So now we have three different colors, our dark blue for the shadows, our light blue for the mid-tones and our yellowy orange color for the highlights. With that good to go, I will click okay to save those changes within the gradient map. Now, just like before, the color adjustments in this image are looking a little bit too intense. So with that gradient map layer selected, we can either adjust the fill or opacity sliders. Clicking on that, we can reduce the intensity of that layer to blend in the colors a little bit more. For this particular example, I really love how intense those blues are in the shadows, but I don't really like the effect of it on the highlight areas. So when you have a situation like this where you want the colors to be in one exposure range, such as the shadows and midtones in this case, but you don't want it to be as visible in the highlights, for example, then you can use something called blend if to help make parts of this adjustment layer only visible in different exposure ranges. So to access blend if, simply double click on the gradient map to open up the layer styles dialog box. And within the blending options, you'll see the blend if adjustments here. Now the blend if sliders are something that I talked about more in depth in a previous older video that I'll leave up right here if you're interested, but at the most basic level, by adjusting the underlying layer slider, you can hide the visibility of a certain layer in the shadows by moving this slider. As you can see here, those colors are being removed from the shadows. Or if I go to the other end of the spectrum, the highlights, I click and drag this down, it will remove the color from the highlights instead. Now, obviously this doesn't look very good because it has all these hard edges. So to smooth all of this out, what you need to do is hold alter option and click on this little point right here to separate it into two. And what this will do is create a feathering adjustment, meaning that the 
active layer, which in this case is the gradient map layer, will go from 100% visible at this point in the highlights to 0% visible at this point in the highlights. So it'll softly transition from visible to invisible between these two points on our exposure range. Now you can go and adjust these as you would like. So I'll just bring in this point a bit so that all of the brightest whites will not be affected by our gradient map. And with that, I might go and just refine this a little bit further. And that looks pretty good to me right Right there and I'll click OK. So now our gradient map is not really that visible in the highlight areas anymore, but it's very visible in the shadows area. The problem with this now is that there's a lot more intense contrast down here versus up at the top of the photo. So what I'm going to do is add an additional adjustment layer to go and paint in some added contrast up here to match the rest of the style of the photo. To do that, I'll use a curves adjustment layer found within the adjustments panel. I'll go up to the curves adjustment here and click on that to create a new curves adjustment layer above my gradient map layer. With the curves adjustment created above our gradient map layer, I'll just go and brighten up the highlights a bit. So we're basically going to be selectively painting in these brighter areas just in this white cloud where there's not a lot of detail. So I'll just continue to drag up a bit more like so, and that looks good enough for me there. Now, of course, I don't want this to apply to the entire photo. So with that layer mask selected, I'll press Command or Control I to invert that layer mask and therefore make everything transparent on that adjustment layer. But that now means we can use our brush tool by pressing B and set our foreground color to white with a soft round brush and the opacity and flow at 100%. And that layer mask active indicated by this white box around the mask, I can now go and just paint around this area to brighten up some of those clouds and make this look a little bit more contrasty and interesting looking like so. Now, after making that selective adjustment, turning this on and off, you can see how it just brightens up this part of the photo to basically add to the intensity of the overall edit. And of course, this is a quite dramatic and moody edit to begin with, but you can take this as far as you want. If you find this too intense, of course, you can just go to your opacity sliders and reduce the opacity of the curves adjustment or the gradient map to reduce this effect and make it feel a little bit less intense. But in this case, I feel like this is pretty close to what I'm looking for. I might just reduce the intensity of the gradient map a little bit more by selecting the gradient map layer and going to the opacity and dragging this down a bit just to reduce the intensity of those colors. And now that's looking a little bit better to me right there. Then I might go and just quickly touch up this layer mask of the curves adjustment layer, scale down my brush, and then just go and add some extra contrast in here to brighten up some of the extra clouds, but not the mountain here. That way we just have a little bit more interest throughout the entire photo. So now with that complete, looking at that before and after of the image, you can see how we've totally transformed this photo to become a lot more dramatic, moody, and colorful simply by using a gradient map, but this time blending it in with more options using Using blend if as well as using a selective adjustment using the curves adjustment layer and a layer mask. Gradient maps are one of my favorite adjustments for color grading photos after I'm done with my usual color grading process. My entire editing process in Photoshop including color grading is something I cover super in depth in my course called 21 day Photoshop expert which I'll leave a link for down below if you're interested. But if you just want a taste of some more color grading tricks you can use in Photoshop right now just click the video here to learn more.